and welcome to Food and Mood, a workshop by Wellkind School and Life Purposely. We are so excited to come here today and present this important topic with all of you because we know it's important to you that your child is developing healthfully. And one of the ways that we can do that together is by looking at the food that we are providing on a daily basis. So I'm very excited to present this topic to you today. And the goal is that you will have an actionable step, a small step that you can use uh, to take away with you for your life. So we want to get started on what is a very basic topic, but something that I think a lot of people want to know more about. And we don't always make the connection that what we eat affects how we feel. Maybe we do when we eat something that doesn't agree with us, then we have that realization. But on a daily basis, what we eat is truly fueling our bodies. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that, how that affects your child in their growth and development, and how it affects us as adults and what we can do to work towards a healthier self. So what we will cover today in today's presentation is a basic anatomy of the gut, the gut-brain connection, where to start in this process of moving towards a healthier you, and some nutritional swaps that will help support you in that process. So recently, you may have heard a lot about gut health. And when we think about the gut, oftentimes we go right to just the stomach, someone's gut, right? If they have um, a healthy gut, we just automatically zoom in to the stomach. But the gut itself has a lot of different parts. It's actually our entire digestive system. So this is the anatomy of the gut. And each one of these parts plays an essential role in the digestion process. So we'll start with the mouth because that's the first part uh, of this gut health that we'll be talking about today. What do we need to think about? We need to think about the mouth and where food comes in, the esophagus as it moves down our throat into the stomach, then through the small intestine, the large intestine next, also known as the colon, and then the exit through the rectum and anus. So this is our entire digestive system right here, these six parts. And I think it's important that we understand that because it's not just about what goes into the stomach, but how we chew our food, how we eat slowly and mindfully to make sure that we get the most out of the nutrition that we're giving our bodies. So here's a little bit of information on what the gut does. What does the gut do? The gut actually turns the food you eat into energy, and you've probably heard that before, but we're going to break it down a little further today to hopefully make some meaningful connections for you. So inside our gut, but most particularly in the intestines, where we're, we are absorbing nutrients, in the intestines, there are millions of tiny bacteria. They're helpers. And oftentimes we hear the word bacteria and we think of something bad. I don't want bacteria, but you actually do want bacteria in your gut and your child's gut. But the key is we want more good bacteria than bad. Some of the good bacteria is really good for our health because it's going to help us to digest food. It's going to help us fight germs, fight off the bad germs in our body that we don't want there and even make special chemicals that affect how we feel. So I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but the gut is called our second brain. So all of the things that we just talked about before, these five parts, excuse me, these six parts, actually are a system of communication. So these six parts of our digestion are actually called our second brain. So this system sends messages to our brain and helps our mood and our body to feel balanced and healthy. So it's not just about eating something and feeling good after we eat it, but it's actually about the nutrients that we're providing our body with, which is going to allow it to make the chemicals that it needs to have a healthy mood. So I think that's a really important distinction. So let's just talk a little bit about our gut and our mood. 
So when we eat good, healthy food, our stomach sends signals to the brain. And this helps us feel, in your child's case, more focused in school, calmer when things get tough, and happier and more energetic overall. So this, of course, applies to us as adults, too. When we eat nutritious, healthy foods, we also feel calmer and more balanced. We're also able to stay more focused in our jobs or in our role as parents or partners. And overall, we just feel happier and more energetic. And doesn't everybody just want to feel a bit happier and have more energy? So this is truly a way that you can have a hand in your health today by making some small changes. So I said this a little before, but I want to reiterate that the gut needs certain nutrients and those nutrients come from our food. It needs certain nutrients to help produce chemicals that regulate our moods, such as serotonin and dopamine. And you've probably heard about these chemicals. They're feel-good chemicals. They're often called happy chemicals because that's exactly what they do. They help us feel happier, calmer, and more focused. So nutrients like fiber and vitamins and minerals and healthy fats found in foods like fruits and veggies and whole grains and fish, avocado, all of those things. Those are healthy fats that help fuel our brains. But really, it's about our gut having what it needs to create those chemicals to send that messaging to our brain to be happy and more calm. So all of these good nutritious foods support the growth of healthy gut bacteria. Remember when I said we need bacteria in our bodies, we just need the good bacteria to outweigh the negative bacteria, the bad bacteria that's actually harmful for us. Because the good bacteria helps produce and regulate the mood boosting chemicals. So what I want to point out, which is something that we probably already know, is that junk food doesn't do any of this for us. Junk food, like sugary snacks and fried foods and highly processed foods, which is the majority of the standard American diet. It's typically what we see, typically what we grab, um, what's easy, ready to go types of food falls into the highly processed category. So when we think about whole foods, those are foods that are naturally grown that are not produced in a factory. So an apple, a banana, lettuce, anything that it's that's in its original form, that would be considered healthy whole foods. But right now we're talking about sugary snacks and fried foods and highly processed foods. And these are the foods that are marketed to our children. So I have some examples here today that I wanted to share. Foods like these, Fruit Loops, right? Fruit Loops, rainbow colors, a fun character on the front. Of course, this is going to make our children excited to try. And a lot of money and marketing efforts are put forth to make this more enticing. But then we have something like a multigrain Cheerio, which again, comparatively, does not look as fun. They're just a boring old box. But that boring old box actually has more nutrients inside. So we know that the food system is working against us as consumers, but we want to make informed decisions when we are out uh, in the supermarket because the nutrients or lack thereof in these types of foods don't allow the gut to produce enough of the chemicals needed for good mood and focus. And actually, not just that, but high sugar intake, which is what's in most of the foods that's marketed to children. So we have yogurt here and has M&Ms on top. So wow, of course, this is going to get their attention as opposed to just a plain box of yogurt, vanilla yogurt, Greek yogurt. As we know, this is what our children are asking us for, especially if they're at the supermarket with us or when we're out. But 
most of us know that our children are just going to eat the M&Ms on top and never actually get to the yogurt. And you can see it's far smaller than this Greek yogurt alternative. And this Greek yogurt alternative actually has double the protein and a bigger size. So it's going to be more filling and that protein is going to last longer. So we want to start thinking about how we can make these swaps because Back to the brain and the gut disruptor, high sugar is just that. Sugar in these foods that are readily available to us, they feed that harmful bacteria. Remember I said we have good bacteria and we have bad bacteria. So these high sugar foods, they feed the harmful bacteria in the gut. And when these bad bacteria grow out of control, they can cause an imbalance. And many of our children, many of us as adults are experiencing this imbalance. But because it's such a part of our diet on a daily basis, we're not actually recognizing the impact that it has. But truly, this imbalance affects how the gut communicates with the brain, this brain. So remember I said the gut's considered the second brain because it has a whole system of communication with the brain that we know as our brain. And that leads to mood swings, to irritability, and even feelings of anxiety and depression. And I think you would agree with me that these are feelings that are rising in our communities. Anxiety, depression, feeling low energy. This is becoming a cultural norm. And the big, big factor in this is what we're putting into our bodies. That's something that we can actually look at and take some positive action steps to shift. So I think it's important to know that after eating sugary foods or processed foods, our blood sugar levels rise quickly. And that's why when we eat something sugary, we might get a jolt of energy, but that's a short-term energy burst. And then as you know, it's followed by a rapid crash. And our children experience this too. So we're experiencing it as adults, but our children experience, experience it sometimes much more intensely. So during this crash, that's when we feel or our children feel tired. They feel irritable. They're unfocused. They may have meltdowns. A lot of this has to do with their blood sugar levels. So our goal is to always have a more regulated blood sugar level. We want to be even. So we want to eat foods that keep us even throughout the day. So where do I start? Probably wondering, okay, I know this, but what do I do? Where do I start? So I want to be very clear that it takes time to start something new. We can't expect that we're going to just jump into a whole new eating plan and feel good. So where do you start? You start with one thing, one item. So if I think about what would have the most impact to start the day, I might look at what is the first thing I'm putting into my body. And we always recommend that first thing to be water. While you sleep, your body becomes dehydrated. And when you wake up, in order to wake up your body system, water should be the first thing that goes into your body. And a lot of people say, I don't like water. Well, we have to start somewhere, right? We're not going to like something the first time, but we can try it as a habit and let me rephrase that. We don't want to try. We want to decide that it's going to be a habit of ours. And every morning, we're going to drink water first thing. So even if you can only stomach this much water at first, over time, you're going to increase. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you'll be drinking a full glass of water. Same thing applies with your child. They may not like it. They may not want to do it. So we start off with a very small amount and we increase over time because your body will start to show you that that's what it actually wants and needs. So starting with the water, but then thinking about what's that first thing that I put into my body. And we want that first thing to be the healthiest thing that we can put in our body because we want to start our day off on the right foot. And most of the foods that are easy access that are grabbable for us are foods that are not healthy for us. They're donuts, they're muffins, they're quick grab things that usually have a high sugar 
account. So we want to think about that and make some swaps that are doable. So instead of buying this yogurt with the M&Ms on top, which has 21 grams of sugar, you might try the Greek yogurt. Now it has a little bit different taste. It's a little tangy, but we would say, let's try this, which again has the protein and just six grams of sugar. So over here, we have three grams of protein. And over here, we have 13 grams of protein. So if we're talking about a Greek yogurt, we're getting double the amount of protein and we need that for healthy development. So no matter what age, we need more protein in our lives. So that could be a healthy swap. And then adding those things. So if you're currently eating a yogurt with fruit on the bottom as it's sold, the next step would be to eliminate that fruit because that fruit at the bottom is laden with sugar. So it's completely covered in sugar and it's spiking your blood sugar levels. So what would we do instead? We would get on a Greek yogurt or something similar that would be plain or vanilla flavored. And then we would add fresh fruit. So adding your own fresh fruit like blueberries or strawberries, you're going to get that nutritional boost without the added sugar. Therefore, you're gonna feel better. You're not gonna have this brain fog um, because of the excess sugar in your body. You're gonna be able to focus and you are going to be feeding the good bacteria that's going to give you those overall long-term health benefits. So that's the first thing, swap one item out. So we can't change everything all at once, but let's start with breakfast and let's pick one item that we're gonna swap. And once that becomes a habit, so you got that down, you've been doing that for a few months, pick something else. What's a snack that you currently enjoy that you think needs an upgrade? Remember, there's nothing wrong with what we're doing. We're doing what we know and what we have a habit around doing, but we always wanna be looking for upgrades in our life, for nutritional upgrades. What could I, what would a healthier version of me choose today? So we wanna do that with our cereals, with our yogurts, with our granola bars, whatever we're currently doing, we wanna look for an upgraded version. And over time, we're gonna keep choosing those upgrades until they become part of our habits. And once they're built in as habits, they become who we are. And it's not so hard anymore. It's not even something we need to think about. So that is what we are encouraging today is to swap out one item. So start with breakfast and wherever you or your child are with breakfast, pick one thing that you're gonna swap out. Now. Some children are picky eaters and that's pretty common. Maybe you're a picky eater as an adult, but we have to try, we have to start somewhere. So yes, it's true. It may take time. It may take more than seven times, maybe 10 times for your child to try something before they actually start to become accustomed to it. And one of the reasons is because their taste buds are very intense. So they taste things so much more fully than we do because as adults over time, our taste buds just get desensitized. Your child is tasting every flavor and everything that they're eating. So unfortunately, the food companies know this and they put in a lot of bold, addictive flavors for children. So where do we start? We start at breakfast and we start with swapping out one item. Once we've mastered that, then we move on to another item. So that's the first step. Then we want to look at offering healthy versions of our favorites. If we love to eat chips, okay, let's find the healthiest version of chip that we can eat. So maybe we currently eat Lay's potato chips, but we want to eat a healthier version that just has two ingredients as opposed to 22 ingredients. So I always recommend looking at the ingredients. Pick the item with the least amount of ingredients because that is the least processed food and your body knows what to do with less ingredients. So that's a good starting point. Next, we wanna include our children in the choices. We wanna make sure that they have a say. So of course, we're going to give them informed choices. So we're not gonna say, do you want the Fruit Loops or the Cheerios? We're gonna maybe give them two different Fruit Loops the multi-grain, excuse me, uh, two different Cheerios, the multi-grain Cheerios and the plain Cheerios. So again, those are two less sugar options and 
either of those are a good choice as a starting point. So we want to include them in the choices. Or maybe we say, here is your cereal. What kind of fruit do you want to put on top? So we're including them in the process. That's always the best way uh, for children to feel like they have some control of what's happening. It's not just imposed upon them. So that is really important to get them involved wherever you can. And then the last piece is to be patient because it's a process and we're not going to be able to make changes overnight. As adults, it takes time for us to adjust. Our children also need time to adjust. Honestly, children are usually quicker to adjust than adults because they have less time in a pattern than we do. But these are great options. Let children pick fruits like veggies or healthy snacks while shopping. And again, those picky eaters are going to need time to adjust, but with persistence and without pressure, we can gradually help them accept new foods. So we already talked about this for breakfast. Maybe swap out a sugary cereal with a whole grain cereal because the whole grains are higher in fiber and lower in sugar. And I did put a, a handout in the chat and the handout is some swaps that you can do today, some brands that are good swaps. And there's also some healthy, quick um, uh, foods that you can choose that are grab and go because everybody doesn't have the time to make their own granola or their own muffins. But there's some options there for quick grab things that you can buy and use today. Same for snacks. Maybe we want to swap our chips. Maybe our kids love the Doritos. And again, time to time, from time to time as a treat, maybe we still want to keep that in our life. But maybe we want to upgrade to a popcorn. A popcorn uh, like this one is has whole grain um, and just three ingredients. So all we're looking at here is popcorn, sunflower oil, and salt. So those are three ingredients as opposed to many ingredients that are in other chips. So popcorn or whole grain crackers are a great choice for that crunch because if your child or you are seeking a crunch, you know, having applesauce is not going to do it. So sometimes we're looking for a salty and sometimes we're looking for a sweet. So we have to play along with what our body's asking us and continue to try to do better by making choices that are healthier options for our overall well-being. So Today, I want to thank you for your investment in your child's growth and development. This stuff is so simple, but it's not always easy. But my hope is that there's some little tidbit that you can take away today and that's inspired you uh, to look at what you are eating as a family or as an individual. And my hope is that you make one small change and you hold to that change until it becomes a habit because it's not going to be the first time you try. It might not even be the fifth time you try, but if you keep at it and you make a decision, not just try, remember I said, we're not going to try, we're going to choose because when we choose, that's something that we're going to stick through. We're going to stick through that till the end. So we're not going to just give it a go, but we're actually going to decide that we are going to have a healthy breakfast every day. And again, it could be a quick grab and go, but it's something that we feel good about and we know is feeding the good bacteria in our child's bellies and ourselves so that we can have that increased mood, that positive mood with focus, calm, and clarity. So Thank you for joining today and please let us know the questions that you have so we can follow up and make sure that we are helping support you in your learning journey.